all morning. And I'm getting ready, rolling out the bed, thinking, now, Lord, what shall you have me to say today? Usually during the week, you know, preachers get ready. Because they're asking God, Lord, give me that which you want me to say about you. You've got to open this up for me. You've got to get through the uh, physical realm and tap into the spirit realm. Uh -huh. And you have to go and get through that. Now, if you've got an actual uh, weakness for pork chops and gravy, uh -huh. you know, with some mashed potatoes on the side, yeah. green beans, yeah. you, you can forget trying to reach the spiritual realm. Uh -huh. If they cook it in the next room, uh -huh. I, I just need to tell somebody that because they need to hear that. Uh -huh. You have to go somewhere where they're not cooking your favorite kind of food. Because the physical is going to always be in your way. So you have to move somewhere that you're not tempted. Amen. Have you used to listening to James Brown or something like that? Or some of these other singers? I don't know anybody else. Uh, but you have to tune out. Everything that brings your physical uh, part of yourself pleasure. You got to tune that out. Turn that off. And then you got to try to tap into the spirit realm. God wants to give you what he wants you to say when you are preaching. And don't you know, I listened to our brother talk about uh, the book, what's that, the book of Acts? Acts. Acts 20th chapter? 20th chapter, 24th verse. 20th chapter, 24th verse. All right, you, you go ahead, brother. That's all right. You, you want to come up here now and do it? <laughs> yeah, man. But be, be blessed. God bless you. And, and, and I got to run out of grandbaby. That's all right. We already got that part. You, just, you love on that grandbaby. Tell her who Jesus is. Yeah, tell her. Uh, just lean on him. He won't let you fall. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Mount Zion loves you. Amen. Amen. Mount Zion loves you. Amen. 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 January. <laughs> uh, June of 1977. June 1977. Wow. wow. <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah. Boy, it must have been hot in here because I started preaching in, I think it was about July 1977. <laughs> must have been a heat wave going through me. <laughs> May God bless you. God bless every last one of y'all. Amen. Amen. And, and one of the things that you have to do as a Christian, you have to tune out some things and tap into the spirit. God will, has things available for you right. in the spirit. And you can't get it looking at your telephone. You can't get it looking at the internet. You can't get it looking at these games and these apps and all of that. You have to lay that aside, turn it off. And ask of God to give you what he would want you to have. Now God can speak to you through a lot of people. Oh yes he can. He don't always have to speak to you through... Uh, church members, God can speak to you through a dead, eyed, just, just sloppy drunk. God can speak to you. Now, he won't do it all the time. But if you listen and keep your ear to the spirit world, God can speak. And you'll be going down the street somewhere and you'll see him over there. I can't hardly stand up. And you say, bless you, brother. And that. Out of his mouth will come something that God wants you to hear. Yes. Out of his mouth. Yes, sir. Because what he'll say is, you're looking at yourself. Uh -huh. If it had not been for God on your side. Right. I wish I had somebody yeah. to help me. Yeah. You're looking at yourself. Uh -huh. Could have been you. Yeah. Could have been you. Yeah. So when you're putting people down, talking bad about folks, you got to remember... It could have been me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Could have been me. Not my brother, sister, father, mother, but it could have been me. 
if it had not been for God on my side. Sometimes we only get just some uh, family religion. We get the family religion. We get, I'm going to be all right because everybody in my family, you know, they're all right. I'm going in under my family name. No, God says he going to give you a new name. And when he, you open up your heart to the Lord, he'll give you a new name written and recorded in heaven. That's what he will do. It's written in the word. Written in the word. You got a new name. A new name. A new name. A new name. That is recorded in heaven. Amen. So when you, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you now. When I was sitting there on the side of the bed, thinking about, Lord, now what shall I say to your people this morning? What do you want me to say? Now, all week long, I've been asking that question, and I got no answer. Uh -huh. But you can't stop asking. You know, and don't you worry about that time, you know, but uh, you just ask God one time, you just ask God. You keep asking, asking, asking. I'm telling you. Because there are many times that you, even Jesus himself laid hands on one of them and prayed. Uh -huh. And the healing was not complete. Am I right about it? It's in the book. So Jesus had to pray the second prayer. Uh -huh. And if he had to do it, don't feel bad about asking and asking and asking. So you've got to understand the Lord will answer your problem according to your need. Uh -huh. See, Lord, I have a need. God got all the answers. He's got all the answers. And I need you to know that you can, and I may be talking to some preacher out here. I don't know that either. But I do know that when I was sitting there, and I was thinking about it, I said, well, maybe, Lord, I said, uh, maybe somebody else is supposed to preach this morning. I said, so I'm going to go on just like somebody else is supposed to preach. And so I got dressed and everything, and I came on. And, well, I picked up my Bible and walked out the door, came on to the church, sat in the back with my overcoat on. <laughs> Kept my overcoat on, and I heard a tremendous noise in the church. Uh -huh. I'm talking about what the Bible says. There was a noise abroad. Right. Ah, woo! In the sanctuary. Right. That's the way it was on the day of Pentecost. When they had met together for 10 days. And they had been asking God, let me move this physical stuff out of the way. I'm not interested in this. But I'm only interested in what you have to offer in the spirit. I need the spirit of God. Anybody in here know what the spirit of God is? Do you desire the spirit of God? See, a lot of times the spirit of God has kept a whole lot of people alive. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because the flesh will have already spoke to you. You going to let them talk to you like that? You gonna let them get away with that? See you. You read, mm -mm, you ain't gonna get. You start getting ready to, you know, punch them in the left eye and everything. And, but the Holy Ghost will tell you. Said no, that's not my way. Said you're different now. You got my name on you, yes. not just your name. Yes. You got my name on you. Yes. That's not my way. Uh -huh. Said, so, so, all right, Lord. I, because of you, I'll, I'll let it go. So the Holy Ghost that kept a whole lot of people alive. Amen. Somebody ought to put their hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I know some of you are saying right now, well, he better keep talking to me. He better keep talking to me because I still get that temptation. Well, temptation will always be. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that don't mean the devil is dead. That don't mean that. The devil is very much alive. And don't you know he's still working on folks? He's still trying to get people back on his side. Amen. All you have to do, read your Bible. Read your Bible. 
Amen. He's trying to get people back, and he'll use every trick he can. Amen. To get you back on his side. And what he'll try to do is do these three things. One, what he will try to do to you is he'll try to tempt you to become active for him. Uh -huh. And you won't have to be active all the time. All you got to do is be active just once. See, then he got a little more power. Because he's going to tell you, now look at you. Now what you see what you did? See? Damn, them folks at the church ain't going to want to be bothered with you now. They ain't going to want to be bothered with you. They ain't going to hear nothing you got to say. You might as well come on over here with me full time. See, that's the way the devil works. The second way the devil works is if he can't get you with that time, what he'll do is to try to get you to slow down. Oh, yeah, he'll try to get you to slow down. He said, now, nah, you know you've been going all the time, so go ahead and just stay home today. Uh -huh. Stay home today. Yeah. And then you stay home today, and you think it's all right with the Lord and everybody else. But it, and, and it's nothing wrong with you. You're just feeling like you want to listen to the devil, and you stay home. Perfect. It's not that you feel bad. It's not that you, your left leg is hurting, and your right ankle is hurting. Not that your left earlobe is bothering you. It's not, 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 nothing, none of that. It's just that you're listening to the voice of Satan. Uh -huh. And he's telling you, stay home. Stay home. Yeah, you, you've been going enough. Yeah, he's trying to get you to slow down. Get you to slow down. Yeah, you've been going a lot. Just slow, slow down. And if he can't get you there, then we're going to move on to the third spot. We'll, he'll get you to just stop. He'll get you to stop. Amen. Now you know somebody else can do what you've been doing. It ain't going to bother nobody. They ain't going to miss you. The devil will use the voice of discouragement. Amen. You ever been discouraged? Amen. Have you ever been discouraged? Amen. The devil will discourage you. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He'll discourage you. He'll bring up every old trick, every old habit he can Amen. to try to get you to stop. Yeah. Amen. And then he, he, he won't stop just because you did, kept coming. Amen. Don't you know how the devil gets to church? You brought it. Somebody brought it. You need to look at somebody and ask them, say, now, did you bring the devil to church? <laughs> Oh, Lord, I hope not. I hope not. Because, see, the devil, he, he gets in your thoughts. Amen. Satan will get in your thoughts. And sometimes when you're not expecting it, you'll open your mouth, and out of your mouth will come some things that really you hadn't really thought about, but it will come out crooked. Because, you know, they call, now don't be saying nothing about me, but they say the devil, they call him a slew-footed rascal. Anybody say anything to me about how I walk, I know I'm gonna be part of the devil's crack. Because I'm sleuthing. I can't help it. I can't, I got a deacon in the back lane. See? See the old sleuthed rascal. And they call him the devil. But but you gotta understand that the devil is working on you. Because he didn't get you to stay home this morning. He's got something else planned for you during church, after church, waiting this evening, waiting tomorrow morning. He will keep something on your mind, somebody on your job Monday. You'll bring them to church on Sunday morning. Yes, yes, you will. And that's the way the devil works. Now, I'm on my way in the office sitting down. The noise is going on in the church. Boy, this, I'm telling you, that praise team was kicking it this morning. Can somebody say amen? That praise team was kicking it. Woo! I'm telling you, and somebody's been praying for the praise team. Come on, put your hands together. You can't do anything without prayer. You can't do anything without prayer. Pray often. Pray often. Amen. You want somebody to do well? You want your uh, church to do well? Pray for them. Yeah. 
You want your pastor to do better? Pray for him. Amen. You want your choir to do better? Pray for them. You want your ushers to do better? The people to be better? Pray for them. Amen. God will record that. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I went over and I see one of the coaches here with us this morning looking like his granddaddy. I ain't going to say nothing about that though. But uh, when you're trying to get a team prepared, you do put them through things that they might not want to do. Uh -huh. But you know it's going to build them up and get them used to taking orders. <coughs> Some people in our church don't like to take orders. Uh -huh. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 I remember my dad, I got to say this, and I'll say it quickly. I remember one at one church, my dad pastored. And I was a little boy going with him everywhere. I'm sitting there. He taking me with him. I don't know why he's taking me with him everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes it's best to have a little, little kid with you because that way you keep the well wishes away from you. Uh -huh. mm. That's right. See, uh, yes, you know, I got a mixed congregation. I can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> keep the will. Yeah, because see, my, my mama and the, had the rest of the kids here at the house. There's a whole lot of people want to wish you well. Yeah. So he took take me with him, you know, little fella, because the little fellas tell everything. Yeah. Little fellas will tell him when he's walking out. Well, how did, how did things go, baby? Well, well it went all right. Now, what, now, did somebody stop and talk to your daddy? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, how many stopped and talked? He goes, <laughs> seven. <laughs> But anyway, let me finish. What he did, this man got up and he just walked and talked at the meeting and talked and fussed and griped and went on and talked. And finally, when he sat down, my dad acted like he never said anything. He went on to the next point. So after church was over, I asked him, I said, Dad, you don't usually let people go on and on fussing like that in church. He told me this. He said, son, this is wisdom. He said, one of the things you have to learn he said, now, he's a good man. He said, but he's married. He said, and his wife don't let him say nothing at home. <laughs> so when I saw him getting up, just walking and talking and fussing and carrying on, see, I was sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, have mercy. He said, I, I felt sorry for the man. Sorry for him because this is the only place it's safe for him to come in here and start talking and walk. And so that's why I never said nothing about it. But before we got together to get in the car to come drive back to Beckley, somebody ran and told the pastor, said, told my dad, said, Reverend, said, uh, that deacon that was up raising all that sand said he's at home and his feet and ankles are swollen so big that they cannot uh, get his pants off. So my dad had to run down to the house and take some, ask for some scissors to cut his pants off from the leg up. And he got down on his knees and anointed him with oil and prayed for his feet and his ankles. And I'm telling you the truth. God brought one of them down immediately. You know, God can do some amazing things. But you got to have faith and believe in him. Am I right? Yes. All right, so now here's another point. Once you uh, get your flesh out of the way, you get your spirit in gear, then you can listen to what God wants you to do. God's not through calling people into his service, into his life, into his work, because this is a life of work. There are millions and thousands and hundreds of people that are going to hell every day. Yes, sir. Because nobody cares about them that say they love Jesus. Now, if you love Jesus, Jesus loves people. Am I right? He loved you enough to save you. Am I right? So he's calling people into his, into his service. He's calling you in right now. 
And some of you are being called and you refuse to come. But you know, after a while, you're going to get tired of running. I know I did. Did you get tired of running? You get tired of running. It's, man, it takes all your energy. You get tired of running. Say, so, Lord, I'm just, I, I'm tired of being like this. No matter where you go, no matter what you drink, no matter what you smoke, no matter what you do, who you with, you get tired. You get tired of it. Because God is calling you into his service. Somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. You've got to realize that God is still at work. And what's going to happen when you pass away? Your spirit, your soul is going to be gone on the glory. But the work is still here. Amen. Now, whose things are these going to be? you got stuff in the closet right now you can't wear. you you got shoes and your feet can move three sides. <laughs> well, maybe at least two. You, two sizes, is it? But you got to bring that stuff out. We got to have a, some kind of a little table downstairs, and bring them on out here and put them out there and hope somebody go take them home. They can use them because you can't use them. I can't use them. Amen. 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 Now we're trying to make room. What are we trying to do? We're trying to say to God, bless me with more of the same because I'm now I'm eating differently I'm old uh -huh. I can't do the same things I used to going to work all the time staying active, staying busy that helps burn up calories right. now all I want to do is go home take my shoes off, sit down right. and watch a little TV <laughs> for about a, an hour and then I get up <laughs> and hope I don't go to sleep <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sat down last night, had a bowl of soup. <laughs> had a bowl of soup. Amen. <laughs> bowl of soup. Uh -huh. Just a little bitty, you know, bowl of soup. What I used to call a little bitty bowl of soup. <laughs> had it, heated it up, and I'm sitting there, I'm just eating the soup. Next thing, I don't know what happened. The hours just rolled by. Uh -huh. And I woke up and thought, I didn't give myself opportunity. I, somebody else has taken over my life. Sleep has sneaked in on me. Uh -huh. I can't call 911 and tell them sleep broke in, took me captive. Has sleep ever taken you captive? Sleep ever just came on and didn't ask you nothing? Just take you captive. And then there you sit. Hope nobody's around to take a picture of you. Because your mouth be up all over. And I want to say this too. The last point I want to say is that God is still calling his people. Now you may not be, you don't have to be righteous and holy for God to have selected you. You got to remember that God knew you before your daddy and mom knew each other. You are a spirit and a soul that God sent from heaven down here into earth. All right. And I can prove it in the Bible. Prove it. I can prove it. And when he left the own, own record, the words, and he said, I knew you. I knew you. I talked with you and knew you before your mother and daddy met. See, that's what he taught me here. He said, call for the elders of the church. Right. If you have any sickness, he said, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And I said, but Lord, you said, call for the elders. God said, but you're looking upon only the flesh. Uh -huh. That's what he taught me. You're looking up only the flesh. But that child has a spirit that is older than the body. I wish I had some help. I wish I had some. Your soul is older.
than the body. Because your soul has been in the presence of God. And he said, and I sent them down to earth. He said, and one day that soul, that spirit that I sent into them, he said, that spirit is going to become an elder. Did you hear me? Because that's the way it was designed. I fixed it that way. I fixed it that way. Now, all you have to do is listen. Sometimes I listen to the testimony of preachers. I listen to the testimony of some of the God's saints. And, and uh, I listen to some of the testimony of deacons. And, <clears throat> and I hear some of them say the most God-awful things. And I say, well, Lord, and he called himself a preacher. He was saying, well, that's how I was before I started preaching. See, and I ain't nothing I can say because I was worse than that. One of the things you have to understand is that when you're going through your life, you think that God is only going to want you when you change. That's not so. That's not so. That wreck that should have killed you because you were sloppy drunk. Did you hear what I said? Did, I can hear some of you right now saying, Reverend, don't talk like that. Don't say that, Reverend. Don't say, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You got to understand that the Lord is the one that kept you alive. He kept you alive because he has use for you. The Lord ain't finished with you because you still live. You still live. He's not finished. And what took somebody else out, it may have taken them out, but God has more use for you. And I'm telling you the truth. You've got to understand that the Lord is going to use you until he's finished. And you better hope and pray. I prayed two things this morning. I sat there and I said, Lord, I said, please don't take your love away from me. My God. That was my first prayer. Don't take your love away from me. Because sometimes when you get to looking over your life and you get to thinking, okay, now I can't jump like I used to jump. I can't run as fast as I used to run. I can't walk as far as I used to walk. And God, I'm feeling sometimes kind of useless. But God, no matter what happened, because I would surely be dried up and salty just like a potato chip. You know a potato chip mighty salty. And it's mighty dry. Amen. You have the blessing of having God's love. God's love can find you. I don't care what rose bush you have got drunk and fell upon. I know some preachers preaching right now. That I had to go and go get them out from behind. But that was before they was preaching. Yeah. Uh -huh. But see God has a way to keep you here. His spirit will keep you here. Uh -huh. And sometimes when we come to church we won't thank him for his spirit. Uh -huh. We won't thank him for his love. We won't thank him for his mercy. Yes. Who is it? Anybody in here who thinks that God's mercy is no good? Where would you be without his mercy? Where would you be without his love? Where would you be without his spirit? Oh my God. Oh my God, my God. His grace. His grace is sufficient for me. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask this side over here. This side over here. I know. See, I see people getting nervous over there right now. <laughs> Just on this side alone, how many of you really appreciate God's love just for you? How many of you appreciate His love? Do you appreciate His love? Praise God. Praise God. I appreciate your love, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now let me ask this section right here. 
How many of you appreciate to see I can feel the heart rates going up right now? <laughs> How many of you appreciate God's grace? Amen. His grace. His grace that you did not earn, you can't work for it, and deny it. But he just gave it to you. Praise God. You mean when you were standing there with your hand on your hip and that fake finger in that woman's face, he was just giving her the blues. And you knew she didn't deserve that. But God's grace didn't turn off, did it? God waiting on you. He's waiting on you. God is waiting on you. Now let me go to this side over here before I quit. Before I sit down. Now on this side over here to my left, I'm telling you that this, this whole side over here, boy, they're fiery. That's a fiery side. Amen. They don't mind letting you know whose side they on. Yeah, you know, now this side over here, that's the, wow. Amen. Yeah, that's Kristen's side. They, they just like her. <laughs> Yeah, they're they ready for you. Throw me, put me in the game. I'm going to be in there. How many of you appreciate, appreciate God's mercy? God's mercy. His mercy. Praise God, praise God. Amen. His mercy. So when you come to church, you ought to be thankful for his love. Thankful for his mercy. Thankful for his grace. Then you thank him right now. Lord.